Alleluia, Christ is risen. And we're so grateful that you have joined us in this beautiful season of Easter. I'm Julia McCray Goldsmith, Dean of Trinity Episcopal Cathedral in the heart of downtown San Jose. And in that capacity, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the worship of God, which we offer in person and online every Sunday, wherever you are, however you are able to join us, you are loved and here you are welcome at God's table. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi and Macedonia, a Roman colony, and as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 97. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him. And burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the peoples see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and, and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous. And joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. And give thanks to his holy name. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, 
but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love by which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. So I heard through the grapevine that last week, Reverend Karen preached on basketball. And frankly, I was so glad because I am utterly incapable of preaching on sports. It's good to have a diversity of preachers who use different metaphors for our life in Christ. And since basketball isn't in my wheelhouse, I was grateful that Karen took one for the team, so to speak. Meanwhile, I spent last Monday working on a sermon that I could record for our online service on Tuesday, as is my habit. It had no references whatsoever to the dubs, I assure you. And then came Tuesday morning, and I, like most of us, was left utterly wordless by the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. 19 children, two teachers, and the lost soul who was the shooter himself, dead. Let that reality sink in. Cry for as long as you need to, and we all need to. We cannot afford to grow numb to the devastating cost of gun violence in our country, which has no parallel in the community of Western developed nations. We have tears. I've had plenty of tears, but, but I had no sermon to record on Tuesday. Really, no words made sense to me at all, except those of the Trisagian that we spoke and sang throughout Lent and Holy Week. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. That's been my prayer all week until, of all things, a friend referred me to Steve Kerr's Wednesday press conference. Yep, Steve Kerr, the head coach of, wait for it, the Golden State Warriors, the dubs. I'm not going to talk about basketball, he said. In the last 10 days, we've had elderly Black people killed in a supermarket in Buffalo. We've had Asian churchgoers killed in Southern California. Now we have children murdered at school. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to the devastated families that are out there. I'm tired of the moments of silence. Enough. I ask you senators who refuse to do anything about the violence, the school shootings, the supermarket shootings, I ask you, are you going to put your own desire for power ahead of the lives of our children, our elderly and our churchgoers? Because that's what it looks like. I'm fed up and I've had enough. 50 senators in Washington are gonna hold us hostage do you realize that 90% of Americans, regardless of political party, want universal background checks? We're being held hostage by 50 senators in Washington who refuse to even put it to a vote, despite what we, the American people, want. It's pathetic. I've had enough. Enough. That is a cry of the heart, and it's also the words of a very public person 
who simply doesn't care anymore about what Twitter might say about him, nor does he seem to care about the all too frequent arguments that it's not guns, but people who kill people or that mental health, which we still do not fund adequately, are somehow higher priorities than sensible gun control. If senators in Washington are gonna hold us hostage, Steve Kerr has nevertheless chosen to speak up like a free man and we can too. The 16th chapter of the book of Acts, which we've been hearing from these last two Sundays, uncharacteristically features the stories of two Philippian women. Recall that last week we were introduced to Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. Now only Roman citizens could wear purple. So that meant that her business served the imperial class. She was wealthy, independent, and to the degree possible for women of her time and place, free. In contrast, the nameless young woman that we learned about today was anything but free. She was not only a slave, but she was also possessed by a spirit. She had a gift of divination, that is to say, she was something of a successful fortune teller, but the gift wasn't really hers. She was held hostage to the speech of an alien spirit, even when she was saying things that were true. These men, in contrast, the nameless young woman that we learned about today was anything but free. She was not only a slave, she was also possessed by a spirit. She had a gift of divination. That is to say, she was something of a successful fortune teller, but the gift wasn't really hers. She was held hostage to the speech of an alien spirit, even when she was saying things that were true. These men are slaves to the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation, she cried out day after day until Paul finally ordered the divining spirit to leave her. Notice that it wasn't the slave girl herself who Paul was annoyed by, but rather the spirit that possessed her, the casting out of which caused an economic loss to her owners and likely damaged her own reputation. But she wasn't the only woman whose status would put at risk by the ministry of Paul and Silas. We don't know what ultimately happened to the slave girl absent her valuable spirit any more than we know what happened to Lydia, the purple cloth dealer after her conversion. But, but I'm willing to bet that joining the cult of the subversive rabbi Jesus wasn't the best business decision for a haberdasher to the Roman empire. Freedom is free, but sometimes it comes with a cost. Now, the Apostle Paul, who landed in jail as a result of his exorcism of the slave girl, he had a thing or two to say about freedom. For freedom Christ has set us free, he wrote in his letter to the churches in Galatia. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit to a yoke of slavery. In this case, he was talking about the temptation to make an idol of the law, a frequent theme for Paul, but he was also speaking out of the ancient biblical understanding of God as liberator. Freedom is the exodus of the people enslaved to Pharaoh. Freedom is following a leader who is crucified for the sake of love. And freedom is also saying enough is enough. I wish I knew more about what happened to Lydia or the slave girl of Philippi about what they did with their hard-won freedom. I don't know yet whether or how we in the United States can reclaim our freedom for safe public schools, but, but I do know this. If a religious or political or any other persuasive message threatens to hold you hostage or harm others, it might be time to say enough. Sometimes freedom means refusing the power of oppressive speech, the nasty Twitter feed, the expectations of friends or family, the substances we abuse, the resentments we guard, or even the spirit of resignation and despair that possesses us. If you don't know what holds you captive, I hope you do yourself the favor of finding out. Notice where you feel shame 
resentment and fear. We can't exercise an enslaving spirit or break out of a prison if we don't know what it is. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember the sacrifices of free people. Did you know that the earliest Memorial Day commemorations were organized by a group of formerly enslaved people in Charleston, South Carolina, less than a month after the Confederacy surrendered in 1865? Their communities had suffered devastating trauma and they, they were barely free themselves, but they knew that memorializing freedom is critically important to being and remaining a free people. And that we must gather as we do this very day, this very weekend, to remember that we are all responsible for protecting the freedom of each other, which includes the freedom of children to attend school without fear of being shot. We are not made by God to be slaves to the gun lobby. Rather, we are made for the unity that Jesus prayed for and taught in the gospel we heard this morning. That's the loving mutuality, the oneness of God's people made free by a liberating God, which comes at the cost of breaking out of our self-imposed prisons. So we gather. We gather to share both the stories and the sacrifices of freedom. Now, even though we're not privy to what happened to them after Paul's fateful visit to Philippi, I like to imagine Lydia and the slave girl eventually meeting each other at some local house church gathering. I like to imagine them recognizing each other as people who had suffered losses, who said enough to their old ways of speaking and doing business and celebrated together their freedom in Christ. May we, may we and our safe and healthy children follow their example. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. And now I would invite you, wherever you are, in whatever community you may find yourself in, in whatever way is safe and appropriate, to share with each other the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. faithful of your church who trust the Holy Eucharist to be your body and blood given for us, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot receive you sacramentally, we beseech you spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, remain with you now and always. Amen.
And now my friends, go forth in joy in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.